had to climb up over a high pass in the middle of the Himalayan winter, something that none of the local tribes would touch after November, and it was February. It laid the foundation for my adult life. Suddenly there was this whole world of possibility open. It's made me much more excited to be a student. It's really, what did they take from it? And for some of them, how did they change the world? Ledyard was a risk taker. He established that tradition in the college, just going and taking that risk and making that journey. From that, I think people have always challenged them to say, are there some adventures out there that I might take on and do some serious learning? The speakers at the symposium, that their careers range so many different things from biotech to entrepreneurship to politics, uh, sustainability, that really speaks to the wide applicability of the lessons that you can get through the outdoors. The guys who ran the Sangpo River, the seven uh, probably best big water kayakers in the world, decided to do it in the middle of the winter, in the, of the Himalayan winter, so that they would hit the river at the lowest possible water level when most of the tributaries were locked in ice. And uh, so we moved down through the Sangpo Gorge, which is the deepest gorge in the world. It's subtropical in the bottom. There are tigers and leopards down there. But you're looking straight up at 25,000 foot peaks. I went out to New Victoria docks and there tied up is an all black pirate ship. And there were rows of skulls and crossbones painted on the super black superstructure. And these are ships these guys had sunk or land on the high seas. And two days south of Tasmania, when we were out and you know heading towards the Antarctic ice edge to hunt the Japanese whaling fleet, all the all the welders on board came out and welded a big blade onto the bow of the ship. Supposedly near here, John Ledyard chopped down a tree and hollowed it out into a 40-foot long dugout canoe. And he then, with a few of his friends looking on, he launched the canoe into the Connecticut River, which was probably was flowing a lot faster than this because it was spring and there were no dams, and floated on down the river, sort of ostentatiously reading a book of poetry. We started at about 59 degrees north latitude and ended at about 64 degrees north latitude, just south of the Arctic Circle. We came around a bend. There were two large steps, heavy water, and we swamped over the first one and then rolled and dumped off on the second one. It was cold. The minute we were out of the water, our clothes froze, and we had lost our stoves and our rifles, and we were able to make a small fire. But by that time, we were north of the trees, and there was just heather and little tundra vegetation, so the fire was a smoldery sort of source, but not enough to uh, dry us nor warm us sufficiently. Part of the experience here was deciding with a group of people that we were going to go do this expedition down the length of the, of the Rio Grande. Uh, turns out no one had ever navigated the river in its entirety from its source in Colorado down to the ocean. That trip really had a major impact on, on my life. I liked this world of advocacy, advocacy around the environment. That was kind of the beginning of my career in environmental and energy policy and finance. There was this part of Ledyard's life that nothing's known about, where he traveled from Stockholm, Sweden, to St. Petersburg, Russia, in the middle of winter, and he did it in 10 weeks. We decided we wanted to retrace the trip, and being out outdoorsmen, we wanted to do it on foot under our own power. I'm a photographer, and that was sort of inspired by my trip. The way that people have been able to carve out lives and professions and professional success where these kind of adventures really enrich those lives and um, are enriched by those lives. It's really cool. In December, I went to Ecuador, and that was by far the most impactful trip I've ever been on. Not only did I get just exponentially better at kayaking, which has served me as a ledger leader, but I also pushed myself to an extent that I've never pushed myself before. 
I've been taught how to be a critical thinker and to analyze things and to make responsible decisions. But kayaking, it makes you take the cost-benefit ratio of any particular decision and think about it responsibly and then make a decision that may or may not be a decision you wanted to make in the first place. And that, in terms of acting like a leader, I don't think I've gotten that experience in it, any other situation. It's fine. I'll, I just won't flip. My time in the DOC really introduced me to how many possibilities there were in the world. I think the people that come here are highly motivated, obviously, and, and smart and have big imaginations. And uh, I think it's a, it's a great recipe for developing explorers and adventurers. You can tell that it's a group of people who have pushed their limits, both of their fields and of their, you know, their physical limits. It was spiritual, professional, and political impacts of profound importance for me. I think what Ledyard has done is, is really focus the energy um, on, on, on not just on a river close by campus, but on where rivers take us.